This week on Facts of Fishing, Dave will try to crack the code to offshore small jaw. Oh, it's a, oh, a giant! Dude, that was a giant, giant fish. Oh, good one too. I don't think this is a bass, dude. No, this is not a bass. Oh, goodness. Look at this thing. It's Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street. I'm Dave Mercer, pro angler and all-round fishing big mouth. Today, I've got one day on one body of water, and I am surrounded by cameras. Unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you, they're gonna show you everything that happens. And I mean everything. Bet you thought I was gonna get a backlash. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Shimano, technology you can feel. Yamaha, conquer water. Phoenix Boats. Live Target, lifelike lures. Jacko, eat, sleep, Jacko. And Rigid Industries LED Lighting, excellence in innovation. You know, I'll be honest, a lot of times on Facts of Fishing, I mean, we beat the bank. There's always a huge percentage of fish that spend their year close to the shore. But there's a lot of offshore fish that we miss out on. And today, that's what we're gonna key in on. Post-spawn fish that are grouped up offshore. You know, one of the real keys with this offshore fishing is confidence. And how you get that confidence is countless hours just trolling around on your electronics. And I don't mean trolling as in fishing, I mean just using your big motor, learning those areas. Because no different than fishing a boat dock, a pad bed, a weed bed, you can physically see that with your eyes. So you've got a lot more confidence in the areas you fish. The better you know what you're fishing below the boat, the more effectively you're gonna fish it. And it's gonna give you more confidence. So spend a lot of time learning those areas. Those subtle little turns and bends can really pay off in a big way. Come on, fish. You know, it's real, real easy when you're fishing offshore like this to kind of just look out at, and it's endless. It feels like you're, you know, you're fishing in the middle of nowhere. But that's where that homework pays off. Knowing that not everything's the same down there. I mean, it's, and it's not just rock piles. It, it's just, there's twists and turns and no different than a shoreline. Offshore is the exact same. You just have to believe in it. Think about it the same way you think of the shallows. Pick that area apart just like you would when you're fishing around a boat dock or a pad bed or anything like that. You just have to visualize what your bait's doing in the area that you're fishing. That's why all those hours on your electronics really pay off. The better you know the area, the better you can fish it. Freaking fish right down there. Eat it. You know, when it comes to offshore fishing like this, the best, most effective way to fish is with a crankbait, and I'll always start with that. On a slick, calm day like today, I mean, I may have to change it up a little bit like this, but uh, it always is the most effective way to start. Why? Just simply because you're gonna be allowed to cover a lot more water quickly. I mean, once we get these fish pinpointed right in that exact spot, I may slow down and throw something a little bit different, but a crankbait's gonna allow me to cover water and get a pulse on the fish early on. Another follow. Mm, they're following the bait. They're just not eating it. Come on guys, that doesn't make for a very exciting show. 
They fished for 28 hours, 7,332 follows, and caught. No fish. Oh, I got one. There he goes. Follow. Always have that second bait ready to go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, you ain't that big, dude. You are not that big. You know, even when you're throwing a crankbait like we are here today, always, always have a follow-up bait. I mean, this dude just followed me. I lowered a little flick shake on him. I did the little flick shake shake boom. And he could not resist. Little chunk. I mean, that's not a giant, but that is a chunk. Now, this is one of the most deadly follow-up baits. Just a little jackal flick shake. I mean, that falls down. And as this dude showed you, mm, they eat it. Always, always be ready with a follow-up bait. And let me let him go. See ya. Fish, fish, eight, eight the crank bait. <clears throat> Come here, dude. Smoked that deep diving crank bait. <laughs> Easy, dude. You know, the biggest mistake you can make with any treble hook bait, basically, is to, to rush that fish in the boat too quick. I mean, let him use up all his juice outside of the boat and use a, you know, a rod like this, it's got a lot of flex to it. So when you go to grab him, he'll be nice and calm and play nice with you. <laughs> gotcha. That dude dusted that crankbait. Oh, but I can't stress to you enough, you throw on any treble hook bait, take your time with those fish. Don't rush them because you don't want a hot fish coming in the boat with all those super sharp patrol car hooks flying around. If you think this was a commercial, you're right, it was. This segment is brought to you by ARE Truck Caps. ARE, outfit for life. Another one on the flick shake. I mean, they keep following the bait, <clears throat> but this was not the one that followed. Trust me, this is definitely not the one that followed. You know, a lot of fishing shows you see some stuff, but very few fishing shows you see that. That is a rare, rare species for our viewers that aren't used to the Great Lakes. That right there is a Great Lakes redfish. I mean, it, 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 if you haven't fished Erie, I mean, you may not know pure, pure muscle. Gone. You know, what's happening here today is a prime example of something that happens to every single angler. You've got a favorite bait, a favorite approach, a favorite technique, the way you like to catch them. And if that's the only way you fish when they're eating that, woohoo, life is good. I mean, you fill your Facebook feed full of pictures. You do seminars, you tell all your buddies how good you are, how you should have a television show. I can't believe Dave Mercer's got a TV show. I should have a TV show. Look what I caught. Boom. When they're not biting it, not so good. What do you do? Well, if you're like most anglers, you blame the fish. Not biting, not in the mood to bite. There's no fish in this lake. It sucks. It's not like it used to be. We have a million excuses. We always blame the fish. But the key is to be versatile and throw the right bait for the situation. There he is. He ate it. He ate it. Good one, too. <laughs> oh, man. Ate it. <laughs> Look at that dude right there. I mean, that dude absolutely gorfed that little flick shake. It's amazing. Conditions control the fish. Remember that. I mean, when they eat it like that, you know you're throwing the right bait. Oh. Oh, another follower, another follower. Another one followed that crankbait. Come on, dude, eat that little flick shake. You know you want it. There we go. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. What is this? Oh my goodness. It is another redfish and a giant. This right here is a King Kong redfish. What a beast. Look at the size of that ridiculous Great Lakes redfish. I mean, that is not 
not the target species, but it gives you kind of an idea of just what an incredible fishery Lake Erie is. I mean, I get followed up by a giant smallmouth, and then all buglemouth bites it before the smallie gets a chance. <clears throat> so the flick shake, mm, not just a bait for bass, also one of the most deadly freshwater redfish baits you can find. And I know what you're thinking, I don't want to catch those, but you know what's different between me and you? I'll catch anything. I'm not a proud man. Fish, fish, I smoked the crankbait. Come here, dude. Oh, it's a good one too. <laughs> Easy. Oh, here's where all the magic happens in having the right setup. And I say this all the time for every bait that I'm fishing, but even more important, for a crankbait, you need a crankbait rod. This fish has just got one hook in him. See that bend on that rod? Oh, this is a giant hook. Stay on, dude, stay on. You need that bend in that rod because, you know, I might not have fished with all you guys, but I can tell you, most fish are lost right at the side of the boat. But we didn't lose that dude, did we? What an awesome, awesome fish. Whew. And that is a prime example of why you want to have the right hooks on your crankbaits. I mean, these baits come with great hooks, Whew, but I want to put every odd in my side. And by switching to those troll car hooks, when they just swat at it like that, a missed fish becomes a caught fish. Fish, no. Yeah, little one. Little punk, easy. Relax, cute guy, beautiful colors. Look at the vermiculations on it, beautiful. Get out of here. You know, a lot of people call a crankbait uh, a dummy bait because any old dummy can cast it out, reel it back in and they'll catch fish. And I kind of proved that point, but there's a lot more you can do with a crankbait. Uh, you know, this bait dives to 12 feet of water. We're fishing anywhere from 15 to 11 feet of water here today. And what I'll do with that bait is, you know, crank that bait, get it right down there. And once I feel the bottom, you know, there's a lot of moss and stuff down there. And if you just try to plow through it, I mean, your cast is gonna be ineffective halfway back to the boat. So what I'll do is when I feel it hit the bottom, just stop reeling, let it float away from that moss, keep cranking. Bass, they just, they don't want to eat that crankbait covered with mung. The big mung ball, not as effective as you would think. Oh, there's a follower. There he is. And there's a fish. <laughs> oh, easy dude. Come on up here. Get up in here. Look at that dude, right there. Another one on the flick shake. Maybe they want me to slow down, but as long as the action is fast, I don't care, I'll throw whatever they want. See ya. He's a good little boy, saunters away. <laughs> oh, they are pounding the flick shake. We're figuring them out. We're figuring them out. It's coming together. <sighs> Little chunk, but I'll take it. See ya. Oh. I mean, fish change day to day even hour to hour. The whole key, if you want a successful fishing trip, is changing with those fish. I mean, they kept following my crankbait, and, and I can stay out here and grind out a show on a crankbait, and yesterday they were absolutely destroying that crankbait, but it just goes to show you, you gotta change with the fish. Today, seems like they want that little flick shake that just falls in front of them and drives them nuts. So if that's what they want, that's what they get. There we go. Eat the flick shake, another one. This is a little dude though. It's a little itty bitty baby. Get up here. 
I'm not wasting time with you. Small fry. I love it when you start to figure them out. I tell you what, a flick shake is a bait that I always have rigged in my boat, no matter where I'm fishing. It just allows you to fish a lot quicker and a lot more effectively. I mean, you could wacky rig a flick shake worm with no weight and you'll catch them still, but you put that weight on there and it just gives that crazy falling action that drives fish crazy. And it also allows you to fish in deeper water like we are here today. Fish. Oh, good one too. I don't think this is a bass, dude. No, this is not a bass. This might be another one of those giant redfish. It's going for a run. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. The redfish just keep getting bigger. Look at this thing. It's Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street. Look at the size of this redfish. Man, oh my goodness. These redfish are pure muscle. Look at that beast right there. <laughs> Freshwater redfish at its finest. See ya. All right, we don't need any more redfish. Oh, it's a, oh, a giant. Whew, dude, that was a giant, giant fish. You know, a lot of people are gonna see this show and say, well, why aren't you throwing that bait on a bait caster? Well, the major reason I'm throwing a spinning rod is it just allows you to preserve baits. I mean, these jackal flick shakes are super, super soft, and that's what gives them that crazy action. But if you're throwing it on a bait caster, the whip you're gonna have to put into that bait is probably gonna tear some baits off of the hook. So just throw it on a light, you know, this is a medium light action, six foot six spinning rod. It's perfectly paired for this style of fishing. There we go. Oh, big one. A giant. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come here, dude. Come here, dude. Open your yapper. Oh, look at that dude right there. Dusted. That flick shake. Old Humpy back. Call you Quasimoto. Good boy. Look, look, you caught him on the head and his fin stands up. Quasi performs well. Mm. Put him back in the water. This segment is brought to you by Hook Performance Fishing. Wow, it's been a lull here. I better get my act together and start catching them. Spinner bait would probably be pretty good. Can pick that up and swirl it around a bit. Tiny chop and some sun. It's pretty textbook for a spinner bait. Just try something real quick. Good one too. I smoked it. Come here, dude. Easy now. Easy now. Gotcha. Today of changes. Pick up a blade and bust that, dude. But you know, it, it's always, always important to, to, to pay attention to the conditions. I mean, a little bit of wind. Whew, picture perfect for a blade day. Oh, follower, follower, follower. He chased it. There's fish. Oh my God. Oh. Easy, dude. Stay in the water. You live in the water. He's not that big. Come up here. Little dude. Needs to join the Air Force because he went airborne. That was so cheesy. Uh, get back in the water and grow. See if I can call a few in. I did my best, but I guess my best wasn't good enough. They don't want to eat my crankbait anyway.
There he is, a fish. Mm. Oh, I smoked the crankbait right at the side of the boat. Easy. Oh, oh he's got hooks everywhere. That dude right there. Man, he wanted it. Every single hook in his yapper. Another little chunk on the crankbait. I mean, that wind starts blowing and the crankbait bite starts happening. Oh. They're eating the crankbait. I'm gonna end this show here right now. I'm just gonna catch one on my last cast, laying on my back. You think it's possible? Oh, there we go. Are you kidding? Yes, I'm kidding you. I never really had one there. I wish I did though. <sighs> Would like to catch one laying on my butt at the very end for you guys. Sorry I let you down again. But if you're a regular viewer, hey, you're used to it. Dave fished for five hours and 39 minutes, made 791 casts and caught 15 fish. <clears throat> However, three of those are what Dave would refer to as freshwater redfish, and that's the score. Now it's time for the facts. All of today's fish were caught on either a live target thread fin shad bait ball crankbait or a jackal flick shade. For cranking, Dave fished a 7-foot Shimano X-Pride crankbait rod paired with a Shimano and Terry's HG, spooled up with 12-pound fluorocarbon. The flick shake was rigged on a 6-foot-6 6 6 medium-light Shimano Jackal Poison Adrena rod paired with a Shimano Stella C3000, spooled up with 15-pound Timber Brown Power Pro Super Slick line with a 10-pound fluorocarbon leader. And that's the facts.